Hello YouTube, my name is Donald McComb and welcome to Donald's Desert Digest. Today we're going to be doing a little shooting expedition out in the desert. I'm located oh, right now about three miles due east of historic Benson, Arizona, some 35 miles north of the Mexican border down in the uh, Sonoran Desert. So what we have for you today is we're going to do a little handgun shooting with the Smith & Wesson Model 25, a little 1911 shooting with the Desert Eagle, and I've got a couple reactive targets. I'm going to be shooting the uh, 308 the Compass by Smith & Wesson at a canister of liquid nitrogen and a pressurized canister of, of pressurized nitrogen, which is pressurized according to the gauge at 3,000 PSI. And uh, as soon as we get everything set up, we'll get going here. Okay, what you see here are three targets for the 308. The first one here is just a steel plate that's about, oh, 3 16th of an inch thick. And this is just going to be to verify that the scope is shooting where it was the last time I shot it, which was a little over a year ago. We have here a pressurized canister of, of pressurized nitrogen. This is an emergency blowdown bottle for a Boeing 747 that when I was in the aircraft parts business never got sold. And I don't know if you can make out the gauge, but it's reading just around 3,000 3, PSI, which I don't know what it's going to do. It might just pop a hole right through it and make a big hissing noise. It might blow up. I don't know. We're going to find out. And here is a canister inside this is a canister of uh, liquid nitrogen, which uh, right now is about 320 below zero. Now, this should do something when I hit this. So, I don't know what to expect. Maybe a big white cloud. Who knows? So, I'm going to go get those set up, and I'll be back in a second. Okay. I'm setting up the targets out here. I'm about... Oh, probably 60 or 70 yards from the Polaris, where I've got everything set up. And panning over this way... We have the three targets. The left target is the steel plate, which will be the verification target to uh, sight in the rifle. The middle target is the high, uh, liquid nitrogen and the pressurized canisters right there. So we'll get back over there and we'll probably save this to the end. I'm gonna do a little pistol shooting first. So stay tuned. Okay, we're gonna start with the Desert Eagle 1911G. This is essentially a 1911 cl clone. This particular one by Desert Eagle is made in Israel. It's easily one of the nicest shooting 45s I've ever had. They're not cheap. This will set you back almost a thousand. But anyway, I'm going to be shooting at a steel target, which is essentially a uh, gong. Oh, it's about uh, 20, you know, 15 yards over here. So. You'll know it when I hit it because it'll make a nice ring. So let's get started with this. Lock back. All right, on to the next one. Okay, next up, we have the Smith & Wesson Model 25-5 in 45 Long Colt. It took me forever to track down one of these. Literally, I, wanted, I hunted 20 years to find the right one. This is essentially the gun that Smith & Wesson later used as a basic frame for the Model 2944 Magnum of Dirty Harry fame. So, it's a historic gun. Very hard to find, especially in mint condition like this one. 
And this one is in 45 long cold, as I think I mentioned. And we're going to give this a shot at the gong over here. Okay. It looked like I thought I had six out of six, but it was looks it's probably five out of five. Still, considering I haven't shot this one in a couple months, that's not too half bad. All right, on to the next one. Okay, now I'm back with something else. I wasn't actually going to bring this one out. But at the last second, I decided, what the heck? This is, you may recognize it, is essentially a derivative of the iconic AK-47, except this is an AMD-65, and it's basically a Hungarian paratrooper or tank rifle. So it's basically small, compact, so you can get in and out of a helicopter or a tank. And it has a folding stock, which we'll be utilizing here. And we're gonna try that on the gong. The gong itself is rated to about 2,000 feet per second. This is just a tad over that. And I have shot AKs at this before. It doesn't hurt the gong. So we're gonna give this a whirl. This is a 20 round magazine, which is a standard for this particular gun. The normal AKs are 30 round. So we'll give this a shot. And let's see. Well, it hits hard. Knock the target down. So, that gives you a demonstration of this weapon. Now I gotta go set up the target. Okay. Working up to the grand finale here. This is the uh, Thomas, Tom, Thompson Contender by Smith & Wesson 308 Compass. It has a muzzle brake on the end here, which will cut recoil by about, oh, 40 to 50 percent. And this one is equipped with a Leopold scope. Very accurate. The last time I shot this was over a year ago, and it was pretty much dialed in then. So we're going to see if it's still dialed in. I'm going to be shooting the uh, steel little test target, which is the far left one of the three. And then we'll set up and shoot the uh, two nitrogen targets. So here we go. Oh yeah, one last thing. We're going to be using for the uh, test target Fort Scott Munitions Solid Copper 168 Grain Projectile. Very expensive round, needle point, really low drag coefficient. So uh, this is what we're going to try on the test target. I have not shot these before, so I have no idea what they're going to do. Okay, here we go. Steel target on the left. I'd say that was a hit. Okay, 
I'd say the rifle's still sighted in. Dead center, almost dead center, with a quarter of an inch off. But that'll be good enough for this. Now we're going to switch to a different round. Lake City Arsenal, U.S. Army, 1991 production national match ammo. So we'll see how these do. The next target will be the uh, liquid nitrogen, I think. We'll save the pressurized one for last. Okay, here we go again. Center target, or now it's the first, the left target. And uh, to quote a couple of young friends of mine, let's get it. Okay. Three, two, one. And a miss. Okay. Try that again. Well, that was interesting. Didn't know what to expect from that. Sounded like a boom though on the other end. All right, let me get set up again. Okay. This last of the reactive targets is the uh, pressurized nitrogen 3000 PSI. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but I'm behind some cover. So, let's get her done. Okay, just about ready. In three, two, one. Oh, yeah. back 70 yards. That was something. Okay. All right. Okay. I had a backup reactive plan in case nothing happened on that last shot, which obviously it was something to see. I put a one gallon jug of water out there at oh, 50 yards, and we're just gonna hit that with a 308. I know what that's gonna do. If you've never seen a, a jug of water get blown up by a high powered rifle bullet, you'll enjoy this. Okay, uh, I'll be shooting through some brush apparently, shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, in three, two, one, boom. All right. Okay, there's what's left of the water jug and the pressurized nitrogen tank. It flew back this way somewhere. Gonna have to find it. So we'll see where it is.
Okay, there's the water bottle again. And the nitrogen tank, it came back all the way over here. Of course, it's going to be in a position where I can't really get to it. But uh, there it is. And uh, it was back, oh, what, 50 yards over there. So, all right, let me get this out of here. And as far as the, uh, the liquid nitrogen, it blew to pieces. There's just little bits and pieces of it. Little bits of the insulation material. It's just gone. I have no idea where it, it's nowhere to be seen. What can I say? All right, you see how far I am back to the uh, Polaris. I'm gonna have to get a special tool to get that, that pressurized tank out of that bush because it happened to have landed in a Palo Verde bush which has got like half inch thorns all over it. And it landed right down at the bottom where I can't get to it. So I'll get back with you in a second. Okay, I'm back at the uh, pressurized bottle. I don't know if you could see it, but on this tree, there are thorns that will get you. So I have here a little claw. I don't know if you can see that either. Anyway, this thing I use to pick up brass saves me from bending over and picking it up. When I'm using a pistol or something that shoots brass out the side, this is just handy. But it's going to be used today for this. We're just going to reach in here. Hopefully. Come on. Ah. Ay, 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 ay. All right. Well, the heck with it. I'll take a chance at this point. All righty. Anyway, let's see what we got. All right. Pretty close to dead center. Gauge is blown down and out to zero and it just peeled that thing open. That's why you shoot, if you're gonna shoot something like this, you do it at a safe distance. Yeah, you don't wanna be trying that at point blank range. Anyway, okay, get back to the vehicle. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's little shooting trip. I think that's going to conclude it for today. Did have a couple interesting reactions on the uh, nitrogen targets. And uh, I hope you uh, like what you're seeing here. In the future, we're going to be doing all sorts of interesting things. A little metal detecting, exploring the desert. Who knows, filming rattlesnakes if I can run into some. And maybe trips up to Tucson, interviews with local businesses, and just show you around historical southern Arizona. So uh, there'll be more shooting in the future too. I can guarantee that. So if you like what you see, uh, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. I do appreciate it. This is Donald's Desert Digest, signing off for today. We'll see you next time.